Welcome to the Word for the World broadcast with Pastor Tanya Brown and the Bethesda Temple Church of Alton, Illinois. Thank you for joining me for this message today. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Verse 19, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And my subject today is Laodicea, the lukewarm church. People in the church who were demanding their own rights. And the result of that is that public opinion begins to prevail rather than the standards of the word of God. And this is what is, is happening in Christendom all over. The people and public opinion prevailing rather than the standards of the word of God. So democracy is marking this Laodicean church. And indeed, democracy that is almost ending in anarchy. Anarchy is a state of society without government or law. And God's church, contrary to popular thought today, is not one of democracy, but of theocracy, which means God rules. But here in Laodicea, we will see what happens when the people reject the rule of God, and each man begins to do what is right in his own eyes. This is where government comes to without the rule of God. The Bible says that without a vision, the people perish. And God's vision taught through the lens of his word is what causes the people of God to live, not their own ideologies or thinking. And any church that is not being ruled by God is a man-made church that will not live. Paul told Timothy that the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. We want to hear what we want to hear. We want to hear what's going to make us feel good. We want to hear what's going to uh, accommodate our uh, theology and nothing else. And so uh, the rights of the people became more important than the rights of the Lord. And one of the things that every preacher has to understand and get in his or her mind set is that we do not have the right to add to nor take away from the word of God. And so many believe when we read about this Laodicean church in Revelation, that this is the picture of the church today. It is the church that is prominent before the Lord comes back. So let's look at Laodicea, the lukewarm church. And not only are we going to look at what it has to say to the church at large just before the second, just, just before the return of the Lord, but we want to hear what this is saying to a church that is lukewarm in, in our Western culture today. Not only just that, but we want to see what it's saying to our church and what it's saying to me 
as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at what this word is saying because after every book, after every letter that was sent to the churches, we realize that he said, uh, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Amen. And so uh, sometimes we come to church and we think about a word that's being preached and oh, if so-and-so just could have been here, they would have got their word. But the scripture says, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Amen. All right. So, so each person has got to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to you. And I think that that is a lot of the problem in, 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 in church today, that when the word is going forth and when God is speaking, each person is not looking and listening to hear what God is saying to them. We're looking at what God is saying to somebody else. But we got to look at what God is saying to me. Tell your neighbor, I want to know what he's saying to me. Oh, God, I want to know what he's saying to me because until I know what he's saying to me, I can't live. Until I know what the word is speaking to me, I cannot, I will, I will die and not live. And I don't want to die. I want to live. I want to hear what God is saying to me. And so, and so I need to know what he's saying, not only to this church, I need to know not only what he's saying to the church at large, but I need to know what God is saying to me as an individual. So what was the Lord saying to this church as it existed in John's day? We're going to look at, uh, uh, we need to uh, look at how we need to interpret it personally. And at the end of each of these letters, including this one, in verse 22, we see that we are called upon personally to have an ear. Put your hand beh behind your ear and say, Lord, I have an ear. Somebody say, speak to me, Lord. I'm listening. So we got to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. So as we look at the Laodicean church, the lukewarm church, what is it saying to the church that I am in, and what is it saying to, 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 my, to, to me as a believer, as a saint of God, as a blood-bought child of God? The city is Laodicea. It's about 40 miles from Philadelphia. The church listed in the book of Revelation before this one was the church at Philadelphia. When it was under Roman rule, Laodicea became a very, very wealthy city. It was one of the richest commercial centers in the world. And this is illustrated in history uh, by historical records that Le Laodicea was destroyed by a terrible earthquake about A.D. 60. And they were able to rebuild the whole city without any outside help. That's how much wealth they had on their own. Now, we don't know how this church began in Laodicea. Perhaps Paul or somebody uh, or someone who was influenced by him uh, uh, started this church. But we do know from Colossians chapter 4 that Paul instructed that the letter to Colossae be read in the Laodicean church. And he indicated that there was another letter that was coming from Laodicea that he had written to them. In the book of Colossians, Paul said, and I love this as I begin to look at Paul and, and, and really get a glimpse of his heart. He says to the church at Colossae, he says, I wish you could know how much I have struggled in prayer for you and for the church at Laodicea. And this is what I have asked God for, for you, that you would be encouraged. Somebody say encouraged. That you would be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. And that you will, be, you will have the rich experience of knowing Christ with real certainty and clear understanding. Our theme this year is knowing Christ and sharing Christ. So Paul said, my prayer for you was that you would know Christ with real certainty. I want you to know the Lord. I want you to be acquainted with him. I want you to understand him better. You need to have a clear understanding of him. He says, for God's secret plan is Christ himself. You want to know what God is all about? He's about Christ. Because the Bible says, in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So in later times, the city 
was known as a Christian city of great importance. Very little is known other that other than that when the Middle Ages came, the Muslims destroyed the city of Laodicea. And what was once the greatest city of wealth in that area became a mass of ruins. Most of Laodicea still is underground. It has not been excavated. But when that happened, some theologians suspect that it was around about this time, if not the exact period, when the lampstand of that church and Laodicea was removed. Because we see in the scriptures that when God was preaching, sending the, the message to the angels of these churches, he said, if we don't repent, he was going to remove the lampstand from before us. And so uh, it is believed that, uh, as we saw in previous studies, how politics and geography and how earthquakes and all sorts of natural disasters can be seen in the history of the church. And many believe that it is actually the hand of God disciplining the witnesses in that particular area. Something happened to the church at Laodicea. Uh, and and, and where, where God took away uh, those who were witnesses of Jesus Christ in that city. Uh, one writer said, I looked for the church and I found it in the world. I looked for the world and I found it in the church. This was a wealthy city, one of the wealthiest in the region. And the wealth of that city had affected the church. But what happened, they got so rich that it lulled them into a spiritual slumber, as if somebody had given them anesthesia. So what are we getting at? As we look at Laodicea, it is a picture of a church in an affluent society. And whenever the church is in an affluent or rich society, it is affected by that society. We talked on Wednesday night about Ezekiel and how Ezekiel preached and told them that the sin of their sister Sodom, in addition to her sexual immorality, was that she was overfed that she was, had a, was abundant in idleness. And God has always been concerned when the church has gotten rocked to sleep. We've gotten rocked to sleep by our riches. We've gotten rocked to sleep by our education. We've gotten rocked to sleep by our degrees. But I'm telling you, as we have been talking in these past few weeks, that we need a revival that's going to shake not only this church, but the city of Alton. We need a revival that God himself has to bring. And as I was in the prayer room praying for this city and the surrounding cities, God spoke to me and said, you can't have revival in the city until you have revival in the church. And the problem with the churches is, is that we have been lulled to sleep by our riches and the fact that we think we have everything we need. We are so self-satisfied and so self-sufficient that we have forgotten that we really need God. It's evident in how we come and sit up if we even come to the prayer meeting. We just sit in the church and we don't even pray praying. We're fellowshipping with each other. We're tra transacting business. We're on our cell phones. We're on social media when we come into the house of God. And what God is saying to us is that we got to get to the point where we are hungry and thirsty for a move of God. You have been listening to Pastor Tanya Brown. Please join us Sunday mornings at 1030 and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. at Bethesda Temple Church. We're located at 512 Spring Street in Alton, Illinois. You can reach us at 618-979-9357 or visit us on the web at www.bethesdatemplealton.org. Thank you and God bless you.